Star Blazer is a real-time strategy game by Starcade Arcade. Set in various rooms which show a holographic representation of a space battle, the player gets to control various types of ships to one-up their opponents. Other games within this genre include Brass Tactics and Final Assault, so Star Blazer is up against some stiff competition. So let's go ahead and take a look. Immersed Robot Going against my instincts, but as deemed most appropriate by my software, I decided to start with a tutorial which would guide me through some basic ship types and operations. I was greeted with a rather stunning looking robot who seemed to flirt with me outrageously during my experience. As you might expect, I played it cool. The graphics are crisp, sharp and although basic, look very nice. The performance of the game is also perfect, with very few stutters apart from when occasionally transitioning between rooms. Now, use the cosmic controller on your arm to build a fighter. Aw, I'm so proud of you. Look at you building ships. That's the only ship we need, so you can deselect your builder. Now use your new fighter to destroy the in now target an enemy ship. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Don't get those enemies. Now, we need to navigate around that obstacle. Select your fighter and send it to the yellow circle by setting a waypoint. Finally, capture the flagship. First, you destroy the shell. Then, you capture the captain. Okay, that's all there is to it. You win. You can learn about the other types of ships in demo room or challenge yourself by going into a game directly. Starblazer. The main menu can be a little intimidating initially, and I was unsure on which game mode was the default experience for the game. I was looking for a straightforward campaign, but nothing seemed to indicate such a thing on first glance. Opting for puzzle, I jumped right in as that seemed to be quite close to what I was looking for. Welcome to your first battle. I am Orbit, here to assess your skills or lack of as a space commander. Pro tip, medics are a great way to keep your ships alive. Crush the enemy! The game does a great job of starting the difficulty at a low comfortable level to ease you in, and I breezed through the first confrontation. Let's watch a few rounds as I play through this section, slowly getting to grips with the controls and functions of the game. Your second battle. I am so impressed. 
As a reward, you get a bruiser this time. That bad boy can tear the enemy up. Well, in the hands of a smart commander. Go get him! to the whole world. Uh-oh. This time the enemy has all of the bruisers. Don't worry, though. Your splitter should make quick work of them. Assuming you know how to use them. Crush the enemy! in the whole universe! Two is company, four is overkill. Consider yourself one lucky commander that we're being this generous. Then again, you still have lots to learn. Like, how to use snipers. Show them who's boss! By this stage things were becoming more nuanced, and I had to work out how to use my snipers in the most effective way. As you can see, that didn't really happen on my first try. Those enemy splitters ripped through my ships quite quickly, and I immediately realized where I went wrong. I can't believe you lost. I kept the snipers in place and aimed them squarely at those enemy splitters. I wanted them out of the way before they had a chance to take out my bruisers. This strategy seemed to work much better and gave me a good grounding in some of the strategic elements in being successful at this game.
I went back to the main menu and looked at some different modes. The fleet builder section is not named ironically and does exactly that. You get the option to alter and customize your various loadouts. After toying with it for a while, I decided I was happy with the standard loadout of Fleet 1. In Smash mode the game seems to operate like a sandbox where you can just pick up the different ships and smash them into one another. It's a fun little distraction, but not too much depth here unfortunately. I went to explore the ship next and found myself surrounded by a very nice looking, well rendered environment. The game seems to use these sections to add a little more depth and variety to the game, so it isn't just wave after wave of real time strategy gameplay, although that's there too. I think this works really well in giving the game a little more context, and would perhaps enjoy some more lore or background story to explore in these sections. Perhaps that's there and I just missed it in this initial look. Overall Star Blazer feels like an enjoyable, well-polished title, which I'll continue to look at with interest. Well that's pretty much it for this video. Please hesitantly tap the like button, and if it's not too much of an inconvenience, then please also subscribe to this channel for more VR-focused content. I'll see you all on the flippity flip.